If you're stuck between choosing the Fujifilm 23mm or the 35mm, then this is for you. And to be honest, I've used both of these lenses pretty extensively as a travel photographer, and I definitely find myself leaning towards one over the other. The 23mm and 35mm are both incredibly stylish lenses. They fit really good in the hand, and they also have an incredibly low aperture. Both of these lenses have apertures that go down to f2, and they pair well with literally any Fujifilm camera. I use these two lenses on my Fujifilm X-E4, and I absolutely absolutely love the size, the weight, and the images that they produce. And personally, I think the biggest draw card of these two lenses is the fact that they tick the box of a travel photography lens. They're not only small, light, stylish, they're also reasonably priced, so you feel comfortable traveling with it, and it's not like carrying something incredibly expensive around. For context, it's important to note that the 23mm on a crop sensor camera is going to be 35mm focal length, and the same goes for the 35mm, you're roughly looking at around that 50mm focal length. Now, I'm going to start with the similarities of these two lenses because both of them do share quite a lot of technical pros. So if we start with image quality, both of these lenses have produced for me in the past incredibly sharp and well-defined images. I think at their price point, they are the most valuable Fujifilm lens that you can get right now. And especially when you compare these two prime lenses to other camera brands like Sony and Canon, it's really difficult to find a high-performing Sony lens at this focal length that's going to produce the types of images that this one can. All of the photos you're seeing right now were shot on these two lenses with my Fujifilm. Fujifilm X-E4, and you can see that they do produce some really incredible images all the way from F2 up to F7. Finally, I wasn't sure where to include it in this video, but these lenses do perform really well when it comes to capturing colors. Now, obviously your sensor is gonna have a big impact on this, but you know, the light is going through the lens, and I think these lenses are doing a really great job at processing the types of colors that I want. So if we talk about build quality, both of these lenses are incredibly sturdy. They're light, but they still have a nice build to them. I don't feel like they're flimsy or cheap. They have a nice weight. And so when you pair them with a Fujifilm camera, they do feel nice and balanced. Now, over the years, they have got a few cosmetic dings, but that is totally my fault. I am not the best carer of lenses because I like to just use them as much. So putting them down on tables, packing them away in bags, they do kind of get hit and scratched up a little bit, but overall, never had any optical issues and I've kept the glass really clean on both sides. In terms of ergonomics, both of these lenses do feel really nice to handle, especially when you're changing aperture. I don't actually use manual focus at all when it comes to these, but in terms of changing the aperture, I've really like the feel and the clicks that it makes. And so when it comes to the similarities of these two lenses, they are quite close when it comes to technical performance. They're priced very closely to one another and the feel of both of them is really nice. So if you were to get either of these lenses, I don't think you really need to worry about the technical abilities of either. It's more so picking the focal length that you'd want. And that's quite refreshing because it knows even if you have both that you can rely on it to perform just as much as the other. Okay, so now that we've spoken about these similarities, let's start talking about each of these lenses lenses individually, and if we start with the 23mm, this lens is going to give you a great overall focal length. Considering this 23mm is 35mm on a full frame camera, you'll know that that 35mm is a universally recognized great focal length for all types of photography. You can capture portraits of your friends and you can also capture landscapes with this 23mm. And I think that's the beauty of the 35mm focal length is the fact that it's so universal and you can use it in so many different settings that makes a lens like this really essential in any photographer's bag. I'd often go days where I just have this 23 millimeter on my camera because I know I'm gonna be photographing a bunch of different scenes and that a 35 millimeter or a zoom isn't really going to achieve. So if you are someone who really only wants to use one lens and you have no interest in owning two, the 23 millimeter is going to be a lot more of an all-rounder for you. This is great as well if you're not sure the types of scenes you're going to be photographing. Now in saying that, there have been a few occasions where this 23 millimeter is a little too wide. And so if you are a photographer who enjoys capturing details and quite compressed images, the 23 millimeter focal length and this lens isn't probably going to be the best option for you. You have to get really close to your subjects to fill the frame with this lens. So if you are a fan of close up portraits, really detailed shots, I would definitely consider the 35 millimeter over the 23 millimeter. There have been multiple times where I've had this on my camera and wished I had something a little bit tighter because I can't physically get closer to the subject, nor do I like the effect that this creates. It doesn't have that compression and it's just a totally different feel. So that is something important to consider for you and your photography. Just remember what kind of photos you want to be taking and the style of images you like to be creating. Choosing the right lens for both of these things is incredibly important for creating the photos you want. Now let's talk about the 35 millimeter. The 35 millimeter, like I said, 
said, is gonna be roughly that 50 mil focal length, which is a great portrait and detail lens. The compression that this lens creates at f2, separating your subjects from the background, and also just the style of images it creates is really unique and something you won't find in the 23 millimeter. The 35 millimeter lens will create photos that clearly look like it's been taken on a camera. Phones and smartphones don't create the types of images that this lens does. That 50 millimeter focal length is a favored focal length for street photographers and photographers who like to capture details, like I said. My first lens was a 50 millimeter equivalent and I absolutely love the effect it created. It really differentiated my photos from a lot of iPhone shots and some wider looking camera photos. But like many things, there are drawbacks and with this lens, you are gonna find it is quite tight if you are in confined spaces. So if you are a travel photographer and you like to take street photos, this lens is gonna be quite difficult because you're gonna need quite a lot of space between you and your subject. The same goes if you wanna capture a landscape photo, it's gonna be really difficult with this 35 millimeter because it's not going to be able to capture a wide, expansive view of your scene. This lens is certainly a lot more specialized, whereas the 23 millimeter is a bit more of an all-rounder. The perks of this specialized lens is you do get that look that the 23 millimeter won't offer, but you do need to live with the fact that you might not be able to capture everything you want. And so this leads us to my personal decision and why I do favor one of these lenses over the other. If you've made it this far, you've probably worked out my style of photography lends itself better to wider compositions. And that's why I would usually choose the 23 millimeter over the 35 millimeter. The reason I have both though is because of the pros I mentioned in the 35 millimeter section. I love the look of photos that this lens creates. They're unique, they're compressed, and there's something I can't achieve with anything else. But if you said to me, Maddie, you need to have one lens and you need to recommend one lens, if you are a beginner photographer and you're just starting out in Fujifilm photography, I would recommend the 23 millimeter because it's going to give you a much broader opportunity to take amazing photos. If you did get the 35 millimeter at the beginning, you will find it is a little bit too tight and you don't have enough room in your frame to get everything you want. And on the other hand, if you are a photographer and you know that you don't like shooting super wide, then the 35 millimeter is a great option. Just remember that this lens is more geared towards portraits and details. But if I had to have only one lens in my entire kit for my Fujifilm camera, it would be this 23 millimeter. And lastly, I wanted to just wrap this up with a few suggestions when it comes to buying a new lens. If you are unsure about this lens, you can usually go to a local camera store and rent a lens for the day. You're way better off spending $50 to rent than it is investing the whole amount in a lens you might not like. Alternatively, if you feel you're not ready for a prime lens, maybe look at the 18 to 55 millimeter and get an idea of which focal length you prefer. The 18 to 55 millimeter is a zoom and a great all-rounder lens. It's definitely not gonna produce images of the same quality as these two, but it will give you the opportunity to try out 23 millimeter look and 35 millimeter look on that kind of camera. So overall, I hope this helped clear up any confusion about these two lenses. Just remember the 23 millimeter and 35 millimeter are both technically very similar. You're going to get a very similar quality of image from both lenses. So it's up to you to decide what focal length you want based on the types of images you want. If you do end up deciding on the 23 millimeter, I have created a full review on that lens above. So be sure to go check that out.